teaching kids to be virtuous, not only intelligence, but virtuous, which is, you know, well-mannered, well-behaved. And, you know, Salmani posed me this question of teachers' effects on children. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of the self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh, definitely. Yeah, but this is, I mean, this study is a landmark in uh, the social sciences. You know, they took two children who were in the same, random, two random children, and they told the teacher at the beginning of the year, this kid is a bad kid. They made up a whole false report about this kid. He gets into lots of trouble. He wasn't. He was a neutral kid. They took another kid. They gave him another false report. This kid is well behaved. He's on gift and, gifted and talented. But uh, these kids began on baseline this, getting the same scores at the beginning of the year, coming off their second or third grade, I believe it was. By the end of the year, just due to this false report, which had no findings in fact or anything at all, the researchers had made this up. By the end of the year, the kid who the teacher thought was a bad kid, he had he had failed his he had failed he had failed the class, wow. and the other kid had gotten into a gifted and talented. She had put all her biases into mm -hmm. giving the kid who was a good kid the care and consideration needed, a fruitful educational environment which is needed for for a kid's knowledge to expand. He needs that education system. You guys are talking about great teachers yeah. who saw that strength in you, right? They avoided the weaknesses that you had. We mm -hmm. all have strengths and weaknesses. Sure. I can't I can't be expected to perform. <laughs> maximally in every domain mm -hmm. they saw the strength in you and they maximize on that on that strength here's a way for you to reach this other potential that you may or may have we call that the zone of proximal development in psychology mm -hmm. that's giving a kid you know when you when you play basketball with a kid right you're not you're not dunking on him you can beat the kid of course but you're playing with him at his level right so his his skills grow right so his his his, his intelligence of basketball grows that's the zone of proximal development Teachers have that maximum room to teach and engage kids in that environment. And I would like to really tie this in with a very famous uh, story of Ghazali, who was a you know, philosopher, he was a theologian, and you know, he was a very, very dignified student in the seminaries. And there's a story that goes where he had a bundle of notes which he kept next to him, which were his prized possession, the apple of his eye. He, everywhere he went, he made sure the bundle of notes was with him. And then one, one day they were going towards another destination and uh, they came upon some robbers and the robbers were asking them, what do you have in this caravan? And Ghazali answered, take anything that you want, but do not take this bundle of notes. Please don't take this bundle of notes. These are the fruits of my labor. If you destroy them, I am also ruinously destroyed. All the years of my attainment go down the drain, Ghazali said. The robber replied, so whatever you know is in here, isn't it? Yes, Ghazali replied. While well, knowledge confined in a few papers, vulnerable to, to theft, is no knowledge at all. Go and think about it and about yourself. So Ghazali, after that, he had a revelation that, you know, if the, if the, if the central maxim of my education are these bundles of papers, and if they can be discarded by a robber, by, by a, a person, mm -hmm. I mean, what have I really attained? What have I really learned, right? There's no, there's no spiritual illumination, if I can pun intended or spiritual education at the heart of the education that we, that we receive, you know? Yeah. If, I, if I can play devil's advocate for a moment, yeah. my job is to give intelligence testing to children. That's, 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 that's what I do as a school psychologist. Uh -huh. So it's, it, it's arbitrary in the sense that there's no deeper insight being gained. If I try to recall what I learned in history class in high school, there are a few things that pop out to me. Yeah. You know, but honestly, I remember genuine conversations I had with my teacher more so than me sitting in 45-minute lectures. You know, that's done more to increase my education and my knowledge than sitting in a classroom has done. But it, it's arbitrary in that sense, but it isn't arbitrary in the sense that to get into medical school, what do you have to do? you got to learn all the information. you got to take that. You have to take a standardized yeah. test. Right. To get into any form of graduate school, you need to take a GRE. That's a standardized test. Mm -hmm. So these are barriers that people who don't rise to the top percentiles of cognitive capacity. And that's usually quantified through seven, eight, nine different domains of intelligence, which I can go through if you guys want me to. Uh, fluid intelligence, visual processing, processing speed, short-term memory, working memory. If all these terms are flying over your head, just try to recall what you do in, 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 in high school or in, or in middle school. What, what, what were we doing, right? When you're taking a history class? Yeah. Short-term memory, you're trying to recall stuff, right? For the quiz. Fluid reasoning, sometimes you're doing arg argumentative, argumentative essays, yeah. right? So standardized testing has a really, really high correlation uh, psychometrically on intelligence, but I think the, con the very concept of, of intelligence is very, very single. It's a very single approach. 
and apply it. What you're, what you're alluding to is multiple in intelligences theory. Yeah. So pretty much you touched upon adaptive intelligence. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do in the psychological field is try to expand how intelligence is quantified in schools. I work in schools. So, you know, a kid who doesn't, who has low cognitive capacity, we have to understand that a lot of this is also genetic too. A lot of people have low standardized intelligence for no other reason than it's genetic. Mm -hmm. They score two standard deviations below intelligence. What are they supposed to do? Do we disregard them who they are, the merit of who they are? No. They may have high emotional intelligence. They may have high social intelligence. These, we don't, we, we don't have any sort of standardiza standardization for emotional or social intelligence. How do you qualify that? I mean, how we do don't, you we don't. Right, I'm uh, sure you can, but not very accurate. The field of psychology, we, we're, we're out of loss for that right now. You know what you're still... Well, I mean, you, you can be put to death for your level of intelligence. Did you guys know that? Where? Yes. Well, Where is that? one of the things that uh, if, if someone commits murder, uh, they usually bring a psychologist on uh -huh. to try and prove that their intelligence is below two oh, standard deviations. Right. That gives them a plausible cognitive excuse. They weren't in their right mental mind. Mm -hmm. so this is a, Exactly. So, you know, this intelligence testing does have dire, dire, dire ramifications. Yeah. Yeah. I think the... F we as a society need to expand what our definition of intelligence is. Definitely. Because in 2030, in, when I think of a utopia, I don't think of intellectual zombies like we have nowadays. Yeah. People who can recite their dissertations at you. <laughs> you know, I, for me, intelligence is someone who's very compassionate, someone who holds their tongue, someone who has humility, someone who knows the right thing to say, someone who can read emotions when you walk into a room. So that's emotional a, intelligence. It's a very attuned level of intelligence right there. Knowing the right.